I'm not gonna lie. That was exhausting to have to do this over again, guys. So I got sent a box by Butcher Box, and um, I forgot to tape my address. So anyone who's smart could dox me, find my address, and that'd be a problem. So I had to start again, put tape over my address so you guys cannot see where I live. And that is the reason why I have done now a second stream so I don't get myself and Doc's having trouble. Hi guys. <laughs> Kathleen's like, no worries. Yes, honey, it is a worry if I have a problem <laughs> showing my address. So, hey guys, what's up, Tanya? You're on the course page now, if you haven't noticed. So, yes, totally understandable. Yes, okay. So, couldn't even see through. But, you know, those smart people, they can. They can, you know, take the clip. They can enlarge it and see my little address right here. And now you can't. So here we go. Uh, you guys can't see anything, but people who are smart can. It's very easy to blow things up. So you can see. Keisha, I've been busy. This girl has been busy. I'm not gonna lie. So, 90210, that is not my zip code, but sure. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the butcher box. Let's go into proteins. I'll answer you guys' questions as you're chiming into this broadcast. And then I'm going to scrum out of here. Because every time I don't do daily vlogs, you guys, or live streams, you think there's something wrong. Sometimes I just don't want to live stream. So bison meat is a little too lean for keto. But if you do get lean meats like lamb or bison, you always want to go close to the rib. So let's unbox this. So here we have, I'm going to lower so you guys can see a little bit more that I have my butcher box. I'm going to talk about the kind of meats that are inside. Or this bit. So here we go. We've got the butcher box, right? And um, a lot of you guys live in areas where you can't access quality protein. So, er, this is what it looks like. This thing is so heavy, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely super, super heavy. And uh, I guess these are the perks now of doing keto on the internet for 20,000 years. Hey, Deborah. So I'm unboxing this right now. So, again, get your box. You guys can see and read that business. All right, this is what's inside. I'm doing an unboxing. I wonder if I should title it that. So uh, essentially they sent this to me. I've got to ask them actually how long it took them to send it. You don't return rotten meat, unfortunately. You just throw it, up, throw it away. Uh, so no, that's been in the trash for days now. So everything was frozen this time when it came. And uh, we've got, so we got filet mignon here, as you guys can see. And let's see how many fat grams are in this. Six grams of fat per four ounces. Kind of low. So we want more fat. So a lot, a lot of you guys are asking what types of fats. I'm going to go into that. And I think unboxing this, <laughs> unboxing me is dream come true, right? Keisha. I think that going through these types of proteins and the macros will give you guys an understanding of what you need to consider if you're going to order meat online or go to the supermarket. So again, this is filet mignon. It's not the fattiest cut of meat. I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie. So this has 23 grams of protein per four ounces. And I think Oh, no, no, this is the serving size for ounces. Serving per container, 1.5. All right, so let's go more into the types of meats. So this is filet mignon. Um, now, you guys, here is what is not keto approved. 
Uh, here we have the breast of a chicken. I really wish they just would have put more um, fatty meats in here, but they didn't, right? So we've got chicken breast. Now this looks like uh, eight ounces. Let's see what it says in the package. Serving size four ounces. Is this four ounces? That can't be. So the protein am amount, let's see here, guys. Where's the protein? Normally, four ounces of protein is going to put you up at almost 30 grams of protein. And even for men, this much protein would be too much. So, except here is like, hey, everyone. So I'll, I will eat the chicken breast. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to throw food away, but you guys, if you're going to order food or, or protein or go to the supermarket, try to go for fattier cuts of meat. You guys are asking about bison. You know, you want to do bison near the rib because it's more lean meat. So uh, here we go. Now they have ground beef. Butcher Box. Again, this is another Butcher, Bo Butcher Box brand. You guys can see that. It says raised without antibiotics or growth hormone. And on the back, we've got stuff is so freezing cold to my finger. It's got seven grams of fat, which is still kind of for four ounces. 21 grams of protein. So for women, you want to do more about three ounces. Men doing four ounce patty of this ground beef would be fine. But again, it's not the highest amount of fat. So this whole thing is 16 ounces. The whole thing of beef. What else do we got in the box, guys? What else? Uh, we've got the, this is this is what's up. So we got more marbled effect. So this is a ribeye steak, as you guys can see. Ribeye. And it ha <clears throat> excuse me, it has six grams of fat per four ounces, so it's kind of the same as this filet mignon. Interesting. Uh, 21 grams of protein, same. Should have more fat because you can see more marbled effect. If you compare the two meats, you see this one has more fat. And you can actually see the fat around the edges. And the filet mignon, it doesn't. So that's very strange and odd. Hey guys, we also have, and I can do a comparison. This is, what is this one? This one is grass-fed strip loin steak. So, hmm. here's the steak. Here's the ribeye. You can see more marbling, more fat. Is this the ribeye? Yeah, this is a ribeye. But they almost kind of look the same. Very interesting. This stuff is freezing my fingers. All oh, red, poor fingers. And also we have, so I believe this is all Butcher Box um, uh, protein, except for the Peterson's bacon. So you guys are getting bacon. You wanna make sure that it's uncured with no sugar. See, it says no sugar on the package. Super, super important. So I did not I did not pay for this, Kim. They sent me the box to review their products. Little perks of being a keto person. Like up the stream, everyone. All right, so this one has, let me see, it's got salt. What I don't like about Peterson's, I just realized, is it has vinegar. So unfortunately, a lot of the times they use right, white rice, wine, red, wait, rice vinegar? Uh, let's see, citrus, citric extracts, pomegranate extract, and rosemary extract. We've got, so this is great. Each, each strip of bacon is only two grams of protein. So when you guys are actually purchasing your bacon, make sure it says no sugar on the cover. Again, it says uncured and no sugar. And also make sure that the protein strips are under three grams of protein per strip. Because a lot of you guys go to Costco, and place like that and get six grams of protein per slice 
So if you have four, four slices of bacon, you're already at 24 grams of protein. With eggs, it's too much protein. So, officially, this is the butcher box. This says, warning, dry eyes, read first. Let's see, maintain the integrity of our products. Your shipment was sent with dry ice. <laughs> this isn't, this is, no, no need to worry about the box arriving without any remaining dry ice. The quality has not been compromised. The product feels cool to the touch. You can safely refree, refreeze and store items in your refrigerator. So this is what came with it. All right, so again, you guys, when you're doing keto, you want, if you're gonna get chicken, you don't want chicken breast, even though they sent it to me, right? There's not enough fat on here. Look at that, it's fatless. We want the darker meats and uh, the, the leg the uh, wings and the legs, wings. Yeah, that's it, Leg, legs and wings. Yes, yeah, like up the strip. I don't know, Tiffany, because I'm going to have U uh, US Wellness Meats. I'm gonna re review their stuff as well because they're the ones that originally um, I found first. So I've just sort of found out about ButcherBox. Let's see. And you guys know I'm pretty straightforward, so I'll do their products, I'll do Butcher Box, I'll do U.S. Wellness Meats, and I'll honestly give my review on them. But since they sent me this big box of loveliness, I'm going to consume it all and talk about it. All right, let me put this stuff down, talk about macros, drink some water. This stuff is so friggin' heavy, especially when it's frozen. Okay, guys. Who has their water? Who has their water? We, we need to make sure that everybody in the stream is drinking enough water. If I eat pork belly, do I still need to add butter? Yes, you do. Yes, you do, MM. We need to get those fats up real high. Deborah's like, water all day. What time should you stop drinking water? I don't know, it just depends. Like The problem with people and drinking water is that they tend to drink a lot in the morning. They'll do like a liter in the morning. Then they'll go hours throughout the day and they'll kind of sip on some water here and there. And then at night they'll have water, but they don't uh, sip on water consistently every hour throughout the day. So even if you have two liters of water and you do it in the morning and don't drink water throughout the day, you can still be dehydrated. So on my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, you guys should go to that. I do stories every day talking about, I mean, everything. So today, was it today or yesterday? Yesterday, I spoke about drinking warm water because if you drink cold, if you're really, first of all, it takes 45 minutes for your water to be absorbed within the bloodstream and into the cells to become hydrated. So if you guys are having electrolyte, I cannot speak, electrolyte issues, you wanna really, especially pre-workout, You, I know I'm not talking about protein, but I. You want to drink that water at least 45 minutes before you go work out because a lot of you guys are tired at the gym because you are dehydrated. So 45 minutes before, make sure it's not cold because cold water has to be heated up first before your body will absorb it. So I just wanted to throw that in before I start talking about meats. Yes. You didn't know that. Yes, there's a lot of little tidbits that we don't consider with our health, and that's one thing. And hydration is so important. But does my asthma disappear when I, why does my asthma disappear when I do keto? Uh, probably because you're not on a bunch of inflammatory foods. You know, salicylates, oxalates, scorchogens, nightshades, lectins, phytates, that's probably why. See, is it okay to work out fast in the morning? No. Only if you have to, and I have people actually semi break the fast, so I might have them do like one yolk and a fatty tea with three tablespoons of fat in it to as to not be completely fasted to go to the gym as you go to the, the gym so you don't have any issues with your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access or the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal and thyroid. A lot of fasting people don't talk about that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm going to talk really quickly about protein, and then I'm going to take your guys' questions, and I'm going to bounce. Now, uh, someone was asking about the bison 
if you guys want if you love seafood for example and you want to have some prawns or the shrimp the dirty animals whatever uh, if you want to do some lean meats every once in a while from time to time if you're out out at a restaurant but for home you really want the fattier cuts of meat pork belly is great pastured pork belly is probably one of the best keto fats because it's got a lot of monounsaturated fat which we need people don't understand our protein our fatty meats have all three fatty acid profiles that means mono saturates and poly unsaturated fat in the meat fat people keep thinking that fat uh, animal fat is pure saturated fat but it is not at all so with that said um, uh, the leaner meats the reason why we want a high fat diet or high fat cuts of meat is because that's when you're you're first going to take these fatty acids and convert from the meat fatty meats and convert them into ketones via the liver in your first stage of your keto adaptation so if your meats are all lean you're not getting enough animal fat that means you're having less substrates to create a ketotic environment so First, your body takes the dietary fat, and once the body builds the enzymes and the ability to use ketones from the dietary fat, then once you're adapted, your body will really start to access the restaurant of your belly while you sleep and access body fat. So people don't understand there are stages to your keto adaptation, and you just cannot go by what the glucometer says. Just doesn't work like that so you could have perfect numbers on your glucometer and still not be adapted now um, so you really want to up your fatty meats great that you guys love butter if you don't have any problems with whey or casein in the butter in the grass-fed butter or in the Kerrygold the problem is is that you guys still need to have other fatty acid profiles because like I said pork has a higher amount of monounsaturated fat, which is great for your keto adaptation. So I know a lot of you guys like, I don't do pork, but whatever. And also the fatty meats of like steak have good source of omega-3s in them that we have to consider as well with the different types of fattier cuts of meats. And we don't have to worry about things like acids, uric acid, purines, if you're doing more of the fatty cuts of meat. Uh, why do people keep asking me about, see here's, here's the thing, somebody's asking me about another keto expert, and I'm really liking that mood where I kind of don't care. I think that if you want to know why somebody else is still fat, go ask them. They have a lovely social media, and they're very accessible. So go ask them that. That's not my business. My business is right up in here. Okay, so... Um, you guys want to like this meat I don't know when this was slaughtered so hopefully it was slaughtered frozen and sent to me when things like meats at the supermarket somebody's got writing a bunch of hearts Roman says hi Stephanie I am breastfeeding while following a ketogenic diet are there any special considerations that I need to be aware of well yeah yeah make sure that your breasts are producing milk make sure you're doing it keto the right way and getting sleep but that's a whole nother subject um, quality of meats are really really important so this is all pastured non GMO corn fed animals I don't know when it was slaughtered but when animals when things are sitting in a refrigerator um, or at they're at the supermarket on the shelf they're just collecting bacteria instantly so a lot of you guys are reacting to that bacteria unfortunately because you have gut permeability issues which creates histamine from the mast cells and so it's really important to try to get your meats as fresh as possible. A lot of you people who have issues with your gut wall. Um, the amount of protein, I've expressed this and explained this many times before. Men, you want to be under 100 grams of protein because you got to understand that this is like an assembly line. You eat, right? You have amylase, you have saliva, you have things to break down, things like the carbohydrates with the amylase and you're already chewing, which is a part of digestion, you swallow, it goes to your stomach, you need adequate amounts of HCL, hydrochloric acid, enzymes, peptides to break down the protein. So a lot of you guys have low stomach acid, and that would be a sign of burping, or um, uh, candida overgrowth, or um, 
acid reflux are all signs of low stomach acid. So then when you try to eat that protein, you don't digest it very well. When you guys eat too much protein because you've been listening to the carnivore diet and stupid things like that, which are really only good for people who've got anti-nutrient issues. People who've got plant problems do better on a carnivore diet, but it's not ketotic. So why not do keto instead of the carnivore diet and just cut, take down your uh, plants if you're having a reaction to them and use a pressure cooker or cook them cook down the anti-nutrients. So with that said, um, men, you want to be under 100 grams of protein because if you're eating all of this protein, especially bodybuilders who do lean meat, your stomach gets backed up. Like there are little gates that'll open up, put things into the small intestine, right? Once it turns into chyme and go to a small intestine to then be absorbed into the bloodstream. But if you're eating faster than your body can digest, you get backed up. Yes, honey, you get backed up. So a lot of the protein, if you over consume protein over 30 grams, especially for men, women, it's like, no, you can't. Uh, no, it's like 20 and over. If you're eating too much protein, what your body cannot use because you backed yourself up will convert it back into glucose, which is the whole gluconeogenic process, which is why a lot of people don't keto adapt because they're so afraid of fat that they then up their protein because they're very, very hungry and their blood sugar remains too high. And if you don't believe me, go get a Mojo or a Precision Extra or a Freestyle and measure your blood sugar for a month every day, especially after your meals. And you will see high blood sugar when you eat too much protein. I've never not seen it. Not just fasted, guys. I did my fasted numbers and they were fabulous. I'm like, well, go test all day, day long because the blood values are never the same. Uh, for women, uh, it's, I've always said this, between 45 and 55 grams of protein, unless you're like six feet tall and you like lift that protein is going to go up past like 65 to 60 grams of protein. But for us more average size women, or even I myself, who's an athlete, obviously, because that's the business. Boom. Um, even for myself, I only need to do about 53 grams of protein per day. That means you have to up the fat once your protein has been moderate to low on a ketogenic protocol. Now there's a hundred, 106, 104 people in this chat and only 47 likes. Can we get the likes up? Because I'm going to sit my butt down and answer questions for you guys. Let's get this pop in, right? Because live streaming is where it's at these days. I'm going to upload some antiquated videos about, I don't know, magnesium and butcher box uh, in the next couple of days. But right now we are live streaming. How can I adapt with histamine intolerance? because you have to heal the gut wall, right? So you heal the gut wall, then you can adapt, right? Heal the gut wall because your junctions of your intestine are open and that allows food to go through and then the body attacks itself and you have a histamine response. So histamine can build up within this, the body. Some people have a hard time clearing it out. Histamine is designed to create an inflammatory reaction so your body can heal ironically, but too much histamine is the opposite. Okay, Lisa says it won't let me like it more than once. Ah, oh, you can only like the stream once. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elisa. Elisa, I think. So I'm gonna take your guys' questions and I'm going to maybe do a story, it depends. I'm gonna bounce out of here. So, been, let me see, I've been keto, but, um, was it Kim? Are you trying to say you take your behind to bed? I'm not really sure. Let's see, is 80 grams of protein okay if you do strength training four times a week? Are you male or female? I need to know that. See, women have more estrogen, estrogen, and we have less lean muscle in comparison to a guy. So really need to know, let me see, I'm just, I just can't figure out what 53 grams of protein means. Do I need to food? Yeah, you can get a scale or you can, look, when I was opening up these packages, one of them said 21, 21 grams of protein per four ounces. So if you're a woman and your allotment is 53 grams of protein a day and you know that a serving is four ounces, cut it down and do about 18 to 17 grams of protein per meal. It's not hard. You see, there you go, stretching your what? My vocabulary muscle is very funny. Thank you, Edgar, so much for 
sending a tenor to the chat and he writes, let me see, what does he write? Hi, Stephanie. Sorry, my phone won't allow me to make it 10. Oh, yeah, it's okay. It's a 10 anyway, 9.99. Is it okay to work out with resistance bands when starting out with keto? In fact, uh, is it Edgar? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, Edgar, I actually suggest um, workout bands just to, you're not trying to build muscle in the first phase, right? Especially if your blood sugar is very high or, or hypoglycemic. You're just trying to draw in blood to the muscle and get the whole actin and my, the, was it the myofilaments to respond to some friction, which draws oxygenated blood into the muscle cell, which helps your keto adaptation. So yes, bands are great in the beginning, especially for those who don't work out. Okay, swerve is garbage, so it's garbage. Swerve is garbage garbage should I say it one more time all right let's see here I want to use coconut palm sugar no that's just sugar Albert so no sugar sugar inflammatory what do you think about supplementing with creatine I don't like I did grass-fed beef for a year and a half three times a day and I it has so much creatine in it I went up 15 pounds you don't need that nasty nasty I mean super nasty nasty processed creatine no you guys, our bodies understand uh, non-processed processed foods. Our bodies understand nature. This is a pharmacy right here. It knows how to extract the micronutrients and use them. You set up, you cut me live. Awesome, Montez. See Deborah Wright, right? Oh, she's responding to someone histamine intolerant and adapt. Had weak veggies, then add them. Yeah, so with people with histamine intolerance, especially who react really poorly to vegetables, you can take them out for a week and bring them in for a week, back it in. Use a pressure cooker, make sure you saute them, don't have any salads. That really helps the people who've got uh, phytic acid issues. As you guys can see, I see I still haven't fixed this phone. So annoying. Okay, let's see. Steph, in our prior video, I heard you talk about how mental clarity, I was wondering how long before that happens. Uh, Leto keto, it just depends on how long you've been doing keto, how your hormones are, how your reproductive hormones are, how your serotonin, your, you know, all, everything, your habits, your circadian rhythm, synapses, like everything matters. And I don't know until I can see you and talk to you a little bit more to understand your keto adaptation. Now, if you're keto adapted and you've got the symptoms, right? which is you don't have that dip, you don't have this hyperreactive, uh, uh, reactive, sorry, hypoglycemia response, or you're not waking up in the middle of the night with like a shot of cortisol, you'll start to notice a lot of mental clarity, your, your uh, things like you know, parasites and candida and things like giardia and all this weird stuff, all those things become dealt with within the gut itself, the microbiome, and you'll start to notice that your brain is sharp. Is there something wrong with me? I cannot eat butter from the fridge because I, because of the texture. Um, and, and a lot of people have a gag response to fats. And what I explained before for people who it is, it comes from childhood. You just take a toothbrush and you brush the back of the tongue. It takes about two weeks. And then that spot right there where you swallow becomes so desensitized that when you try to swallow fat, it just goes right, it goes right down. And those are the things that you learn being a keto, co keto coach and doing keto for 10 years as long as I have. Let's see here. No coffee. Yes. I'm always making sure the plum line is straight. Oh, yeah. So, so Kishel is on my, uh, you, uh, my Instagram where I was talking about the plum line being straight, head, ear, jaw, shoulder. Everything must be straight so people don't have circulation problems. A lot of you guys sit in this C shape and like you guys are slumped over like this and this creates unfortunately the inability to circulate your blood and, and estrogen gets kind of caught up in the gallbladder too easily so it's really important to have a straight plumb line plus for your workouts okay, I have my circadian rhythm going on lots of dreams and feel great bed by 9 15 love it up by 5 15 a.m. love it lights on after eight lights no no lights. Liz you are crushing it this is like Lynn is Liz. Sorry, is it Liz. Liz. Liz is my perfect like you know. If she were to like say have a consultation, someone who talks that language to me. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Those are the people who adapt more quickly. You'd be surprised how people will do keto like 80% correct, and they'll make 
they'll make excuses for having like cheese every once in a while or going to bed super late too much and they don't adapt you have to really take it to a higher level so there are a 108 people in this chat and only 71 likes can we get the likes up guys because as you can see i am shot shooting out a lot of answers to these questions and it's a lot of work it's pretty exhausting Let's see hello i'm so excited to have finally got you live okay cool i'd love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. how to uh, probably want a, um, a consultation so um, my calendar's full booked but i will be opening it in a few days and so i'll have more dates if you guys want to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Steph. This morning I had one with a woman who had, uh, she had fibroids, uh, first was diagnosed with endometriosis, was trying to get pregnant, and also had cysts in her ovaries. So we had a long conversation this morning about her doing keto. Now with her fibroids, um, uh, sometimes just, you could do keto all correct and have like poor meat, quality or you could have too much estrogen or stress in your life be estrogen dominant and still have issues so uh, she had her fibroids removed and now she's trying to get pregnant and I was like be really really careful for everything you do as to not have those fibroids grow back but when you talk to people in a one-on-one -on -one consultation you just learn so much and what else she was saying she was saying she, she had cheese I'm like why would you have cheese I said there's a grass-fed cheese she's like no, and I said, if you have an estrogen problem, a dominance in estrogen, why would you eat cheese? So people who adapt really, really are super clean with it. Okay, does keto cause high acid in liver? No, who told you that? No, that's ridiculous. It helps the liver actually. But things have to be high quality, remember that. I need some one on one, yes, yes. Well, my one on ones are good. I'm really nice my one ones Cheese is not good on keto. No, it's very inflammatory. Very, 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 very. It's got casein in it. You guys, you know, it's like, it's a mold, like candida and the parasites and, you know, it's uh, estrogenic and all this kind of stuff from cows that are injected with hormones. Please hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button, you guys. I don't understand why so many people are not. Just click on it. Click on the like button because it does help get me more viewability because a lot of people who do, do keto and they find other people who don't speak about these types of uh, autoimmunity and issues no cacao powder especially no so you could do cacao butter but not powder because that has mycotoxins that has caffeine and those things unfortunately beyond the antioxidants will make it difficult to keto adapt how do i know because i've worked with so many people who've had problems on raw cacao that stuff is, has so much caffeine no feta cheese. There you go. Nope. Nope. Those those goats are fed corn. Nope. No cheese. Just you guys are so addicted to the cheese. It just behooves me. Like you guys, food is just nutrition. It should not entertain you. Let's see. No cheese once in a while. No cheese. You know, what is it, uh, Rich? Some people like me, I just, you know, people are like, oh my God, you're 50, you're almost, I'm almost 51, right? In about a month, I'll be 51. And the problem is, is that, like, I've done everything stupid without the proper information. So now that I'm getting older and I've kept my youth and my hormones, like, I cannot believe how balanced my hormones are in my 50s. It's like, I'm so lucky. You know, you don't know what you have until it's gone. So a lot of women are estrogen dominant, men as well. Men are balding, men are flabby, they're, you know, they have libido issues. Women have libido issues, their testosterone is too low. And that's why quality of meat is so important. And fats for your reproductive hormone chain from pregnenolone to DHEA down to your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. All these things are super important. I recommend keto for somebody with Hashimoto's. Anyone who has Hashimoto's or even hypothyroidism, it is so incredibly important that you are strict and you are good to yourself or you're wasting your time doing this keto thing. Women usually don't give their age out. Well, I did 
when I turned 46, I was like, stop trying. Because people will like, assume that I'm younger. And I'm like, it's kind of awkward. I'm like, I'm not 30. I don't want to be 30. I'm good at 50, yo. I was born in 1967. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the 70s music. I'm feeling being able, being able to play outside all day long on my bicycle with the banana seat and the little tassels on the handlebars. So... <laughs> No, why would I lie about that? People should be very proud to say their age. I just I just want to change all these misnomers and all these stupid concepts. Okay, is it okay, is it okay to what? Was it pre are you talking about prednisone? Prednis zones? Are you talking about like a corticotropic uh, for your for your tendonitis? No, you're going to use keto for your tendonitis. The tassels, right? Uh, best, uh, see, best year wasn't it. What, twin flame? I don't even know what that. What? Huh? What? What? Shout you out. Why? Andrew? There you go. Born in 66, right? No shame here, Elizabeth. It's just awesome. I'm just so glad I was born in the area, era that I was born because it was. it's like totally different than now. So I can keep my youth, people assume that I'm in my early 30s, but have the wisdom and experience and perception of reality that a lot of the youngsters don't have. I go to the gym and it's just like, and I'm talking to them, it's like, they don't get it. I'm like, they don't get it. They just don't get it. Let's see here, 1867. <laughs> if I was born in 1867, I would just still have shackles on my arms. So I'm good now. Thank you. 1967. <laughs> you ever want to be in the 20s or 30s? Nah. Uh, can you, let's see here. Can you eat keto clean without having to break the bank? Yeah, sure you can. Absolutely. As I'm getting a bunch of texts on my WhatsApp. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. In fact, I think you break the bank less because you're eating less processed food. You don't, you're not hungry all the time with a high fat, fat diet. And of course, you preserve your health, so you don't have to go to the doctor later and break your, break your bank from doctor bills and premiums and all this nonsense. I'm the queen. I'm not the queen. I'm the queen of my everyday life when I wake up. But if people want to make me the keto queen, I'll take it. Do you work? Let me see. Work in your house. What? Do I what? That costs less than protein. Exactly, right? That's a good point. I just have to say this real quick because I know comments are coming in. I'm kind of missing some of them. Um, yeah, butter is processed. What's your point? Which point, Rich? What you trying to say? Like, and your point is what? Like, I don't get it. And is there some type of de detriment to that? Because if there is, let me know. Like, like, like. So essentially protein, I mean, you see all that meat I have? It's expensive. This is grass-fed, pastured, non-GMO. But if I had like a really nice cut of pork belly or fat or like leaf lard or tallow, and I ate a bunch of that, I wouldn't need to eat big uh, things of protein to feel satiated. So it is much cheaper to eat a high-fat diet. I live in the Dominican Republic. Oh, I love it. I can't find... Kerry Gold, but we call it Jerry Gold. And the closest is, uh, you know what? I gotta go to DR sometime. You're from Dominic, Dominican Republic. I gotta go there. The flights are really cheap. I checked them out. They're like 300 bucks. Must go. Um, been looking all over. Just do the best you can, you know, if you can't find it in DR. Pork belly is great. Yeah, it's delicious. By the way, got rid of coffee. Yay! And my blood numbers are better. You see? Got rid of coffee. My blood numbers are better. What I love about this, these live streams is that people are giving the answers. Like with, the, oh, I did intermittent fasting. had issues with it. Oh, I took out this food and I do better with it. I lowered my protein. I did better with, better with it. Because I can say in an antiquated pre-recorded video that these things can bother you. But when people are just, because now with live streaming, you can see the comments. And so people see that like my audience is telling their own story or their own truth. Always looked 10 years younger than I am, so I don't know if keto is helping there. 
Uh, yeah, Jay, it's going to help. If you're black, Jay, which I think you are, black knows how black ages. Okay. Okay, black may not crack that much. But it like the collagen can sag. So hopefully you haven't gone through that type of catabolism. You see, eat pork belly all the time. Yes. She's ignoring you, JR. I, no, I'm not ignoring anybody. You guys don't understand. When you guys typing in, it's like, D -d 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 -d. the comments go so fast. If I don't step, step near the phone, then a new comment has arrived. I'm not ignoring anybody. Eat pork belly and beef. Lots of hot drink in the morning. I uh, have no problem with giving, giving up coffee. That's good. What's a good replacement? Tea. Uh, uh, if grass-fed meat is the best, fat, how, hold on, hold on, how do I get to under question? Um, you can do that with that uh, with like butter or lard or so boom here. We got a 22 from Let me see this name here because it's an or it's hard to read. It's SIRD Deluxe Sir Deluxe. Thank you so much for the 22 -er and supporting the live stream as you guys know It's so weird because I feel obligated to do live streams when I don't do them. I get messages saying like where are you what happened oh, that's a lot of pressure plus as you guys can see i am trying to answer a bunch of questions to the chat so youtube has created the super chat where you can donate it's kind of weird feels like e-begging but i'm not okay <laughs> i barely monetize my videos so thank you so much for those who have contributed to the chat um do I drink, drink bone broth every day? I used to. I don't drink it as much every day. Herbal tea for, for blah. Yes, replacement for coffee. Uh, I'm not ignoring anybody, Andrew. I don't ignore anyone. Is uh, collagen is positive for a burn? No, I, I mean, no, nah, I mean, uh, if you are a burn and you are ketotic, that inflammation is going to go down. But aloe vera is really great, even to drink aloe vera. Uh, is it okay to eat more than 200 grams of fat? Of course. I go between two and 300. I just use 200 as the baseline. Glutamine supplementation. Mm, I mean, if you really feel like you have leaky gut, you can do like short-term glutamine to try to help seal the gut lining. Eat it with food though, because that powder can spike your blood sugar because it doesn't have to be digested as much how much protein on keto like grams do you recommend it depends if you're a male or a woman it depends on how active you are so i don't like to be like one number for everyone that's impossible how can you check your bile production because if you have a gallbladder issue if you have a, a bile salt issue you'll feel pressure in your stomach you'll feel nauseous you'll feel bloated if you're not able to break down your fats and you'll see your stool float so it's pretty easy to kind of see if you need ox bile salts 135, you see I'm 5 foot, no, 153 pound, pounds, 5 foot 10, 75 grams of fat, too much. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, take it down to 65. Yeah, too much for a woman. I have men who are 6'3 who lift on 75 grams of protein. Take it down to 60, 65. You don't need a lot of protein. Is it Martha? You'd be shocked how much protein you you really actually need to build muscle. So you can build muscle by being insulin sensitive. And I've explained this many times that if your pancreas is healthy and the signaling between the insulin and uh, your insulin receptors is great, then on keto, because you're not constantly pumping out a lot of blood sugar and bolus amounts of insulin, you become sensitive. So when you do eat protein, you, you require less protein to build muscle, plus you are less catabolic because your body's not going into gluconeogenesis as much, which makes you grow, which is why you guys see I've grown, I've, I've, um, I have so much muscle on this frame. You guys can see that. Um, and it's great, I did a hormone panel, my hormones, uh, as a woman who's nearly 51 is on point. True story, 51, you want skin, muscular muscularity, testosterone, you want your estrogen to progesterone ratio to be on point. Best tricep workout, uh, best tri I don't think there's a best one, I think it depends on the type of head you're trying to ac access. You know, there are, I think sometimes when you take a straight bar and you guys push, push, right, push 
like here's a better tricep if you're pushing because you want that horseshoe right so straight bar cable and really push down is the best way to access the entire tricep head right but if you really want if you really want the horseshoe to be coming out I would say to twist your wrists with the rope twist so you're going to do a twist motion and really get that tricep head so the whole tricep it's good straight bar straight down right to get the horseshoe to come out then it would be this. and these types of overhead triceps are stupid I don't even know why people do triceps like that they don't work there's a lot of different uh, movements that we do how people do bench press right people who are trying to get their pecs to to develop certain exercises they do are so bad like a certain exercise like um, let's say bench press is the worst so the best way to access your pectoral muscle is to do dumbbell presses right because then you're you can go like this motion with the dumbbells and then you get way you see this you get way more of a flex on your pec if you do like this you see with a straight arm my pec is not being activated as much but if I use dumbbells I'm able to bring it together then you can see so how you work out I'm gonna do more workout videos you guys so you guys can really understand how to activate your muscles because a lot of you guys are not activating it no fasting at all nope nope uh, 50 grams of protein okay five five foot 125 yeah it's great MMK I didn't know you were a woman okay <laughs> what is the best snack for a two-hour hike um, butter, coconut. Um, you could do uh, take avocado with you. You can take pork belly, get the fattiest cuts of pork belly, bake it, and plop that in your mouth. You could take a jar, right? A jar, a leakless thing, a Tupperware of, of fat, which I've done. Uh, now there's that, was it called something? Health for Life is doing um, packets of ghee that you can squeeze into your mouth. But I really like pork belly for a hike so you get a little bit of fatty protein plus you're getting a lot of fat and you feel satiated uh, skull crushers uh, sucked um yeah skull crushers yeah not trait for pork belly yes no fast no fast it was force feeding once correct you don't force feed yourself people who have a hard time eating a lot of fat tend to have a gallbladder problem that's why it's hard to eat fat. It's not that they're not hungry enough to eat it because a block of carry gold, if you melt it, it's nothing. You know, you could eat a bowl of ice cream with the same type of thickness and not even think about it, but you eat fat. You're like, I can't. You can email me through my website, which is stephanieperson.com, only for things like booking consultations not for just whatever questions because I won't even ask it like I get asked questions 500 times a day on my Instagram and my Facebook pages on my, oh, I've got three Facebook I've got four Facebook pages through my oh, too many questions through my email thank you ask Kay today are you oh no you love I think those are like pig emojis or something Okay, so okay, somebody's like highlighting my name. Okay, at Stephanie Person, do you recommend water fasting? No. Just the best way to destroy your you don't you your body has self cleaning methylation pathways, guys. Your your body has the ability to detox if you just eat right. Why would you do a water fast and destroy your adrenals and irritate your thyroid? No. No. Eat, breathe, chew slowly, poop, and then you're detoxing. People do water fat. Oh, we got another one. Thank you, RT Pepe. Thank you so much. Um, yes, workout videos. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you for the tenor. I really, really appreciate you donating to the chat. Yes, yes, fabulous. And thank you, Deborah, for supporting RT Pepe. So thank you so much. And I really like when you guys support each other on these streams because, of course, when you do live streams, you start to get people that you recognize in um, their profiles. So I, I really appreciate people who are, you know, seeing the notification and chiming in to watch me talk about this kind of stuff. Any secrets for, for tall and lean? What tall and lean people for bodybuilding muscle never bulk up? Um, tall and lean people, you guys have different 
certain tall people have long muscle bellies, unfortunately. So mine are about medium to normal. So a long muscle belly would, the, this is a belly of a muscle, right? And that's the shorter the muscle belly, so short people tend to have shorter muscle bellies. So people who do bodybuilding tend to look more muscular because as you can see, like my, uh, my let's say my deltoid muscle belly is short. So it pops, right? It's popping. As you can see, the, the anterior delt is popping. When you're longer, it doesn't pop as much, and you just can't do anything about that. But if you're really, really, really skinny, a lot of skinny people, of course, can have like a fast metabolism. But to be honest, most skinny people I know aren't eating enough. Yeah. So we all appreciate you. Okay, we all appreciate you, staff. We're grateful for your wisdom. Thank you so much, Mandy L. Thank you so much. No to one meal a day. Why would you do that? That's just starving yourself. You guys, if you're doing like fasting or eating one meal, you have to rest. You got to remember like your body's like a car. It's like a Lamborghini. You drive it, you need to put gasoline in it. But you know, if we lived as hunter gatherers, we would do a lot of resting. We would rest more throughout the day because we didn't have bills and cars and all this like training at the gym. We didn't have that of poor quality foods and inflammation and gut dysbiosis and all this stuff. SIBO. And so our bodies can handle more if we didn't have an infection, right? Because with modernization of man, we can fight it with antibiotics. But if you didn't, if you if you did not have any type of infection, people, hunter gatherers did great. If they weren't starving or had no infection, they did great on not eating. Well, to to you know, if it's not too long. Thank you, Jordan Smith. I do try. You know, I love going to the gym. Y'all know that. Oh, what is, we got more donations to the super chat. Oh, Sir D Deluxe, thank you for donating. You're too kind. I really, really appreciate it. And um, when you live stream, you realize that people appreciate what you're doing. And I appreciate that. It's just like good energy back and forth to me and back to you guys and back to me again. So what about all the accumulated fat for fu as fuel? You can only use fat for fuel if your body knows how to convert it into fuel. Otherwise, you don't. That's the whole point about being ketotic is that it takes months to adapt. Your brain has to sig send a signal to the liver to convert, to develop the enzymes. Thank you so much, B. Martin. Thank you so much, everyone, for contributing to the Super Chat today. I really appreciate the love. So thank you very much. So just know that just because you eat fat does not mean that your body will use it. It doesn't know how to. It knows carbs. So you have to train it, essentially, to be able to convert fat into um, into beta hydroxybutyrate to get into the bloodstream so you got what energy 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 that's what we want yeah. so I think I'm gonna stop at a full hour guys so I will take a few more questions and then I'm going to relax hello Andrew jeez I said hello I think already Please like up this stream, Elizabeth says. Yes. Please don't forget, guys, to like up the stream. This draws, uh, helps with the YouTube algorithm. Bam! Right, Keisha? Helps with the YouTube algorithm for people to find me. And, you know, I just stop looking up other keto people because it gives me a headache. And, uh, you know, but at least you guys can get some more provocative information here. Thanks for responding, Steph. Appreciate your work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maldivi. Thank you. So we got more questions going on. Let's see if we need a list of foods we recommend. We recommend as well as the stages they should be eaten. And can we, hold on, can we get that via consultation with you? Oh yeah, Christina. In the consultation, it's just you. It's, it's not general broad strokes it's you and you especially you like people know they've who've done a consultation with me I go in deep with people like we go there like we talk about like what happens when you wake up in the morning what happened when you were five years old what happened when you were in your mom's you in utero like we go there so everything will be custom to you it's not just macros you guys it's sleep it's things like magnesium it's things like gallbladder issues hormone I mean I go through it all I don't just talk about food. That takes five seconds. Like, that's easy. Once I talk to you and know your life, 
it is easy to put together your meal plan. That's easy. Verbal. Uh, Robin, probably because it's your adrenal glands going into fight or flight and it's not ketotic. You're not, you're not being ketotic. It's just adrenaline. Hello, can you please do a pregnancy on keto live stream soon? Well, when I get pregnant, then I'll do that. <laughs> I'm very apprehensive to do live streaming on pregnant women. I've worked with maybe like eight, but eight out of like 3,000 people is not a lot. So I don't like to do specific uh, things on pregnant women because I'm very concerned about them doing it the wrong way. So keto is different. Sometimes your protein might be higher as a woman who's pregnant. Um, but if you if you are pregnant, or you become pregnant, I love it. I just say that. Who knows? You never know. Still have my menstrual cycle. Yep. Um, women who are pregnant really need to focus on getting enough fat. But it's also understanding your fat ratio to protein. So a lot of you still need to go down in protein because you still eat too much protein. But the cortisol is really the issue with pregnant women. And I think that women who do keto and their milk uh, dries up, they're not producing enough milk, uh, is because of too much stress, poor sleep, and not getting enough fat and when, when, once they have their baby. So... Um, there's a lot of women now who are doing keto while pregnant, but your macros and the quality of food must be to perfection. Let's see. Yes, heal the adrenals to improve skin. Of course, because what makes skin become very saggy is too much gluconeogenesis from the release of cortisol from your adrenals, which a lot of people get saggy skin on keto because their macros are wrong, their stress is wrong, their thyroid becomes underactive, their skin gets weird. Oh, John. Oh, John. <laughs> Protecting your collagen. Yes, for skin health, please. Yes. Yes, I think that's what's happened to me because people think that brown skin does not um, like crack. Yes, maybe you have less fine wrinkles, but it's all what y'all don't know. People who are of a Eurocentric ethnic background, right? That Hablo group, what you don't understand is that it's not about how many lines you have on your face. It is about the collagen. It's about the collagen. Right? It's really about the collagen under the skin. Boom! Thank you, Tracy G, for contributing contributing a tenor to the super chat. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I get all kind of weird every time somebody donates, but really and truly, thank you. Um, fat fast soup bouillon. Be careful the bouillon. That's MSG. Nope. Large. Nope. Just do just okay. My pork belly, a few fat pieces of spinach, then sliced cabbage rolling out. And a raw egg, don't cook the cabbage long, tastes like with Dante noodles. Yeah, what I like to do is to make noodles is I'll take cabbage and I'll cut it like you have a head of cabbage and then I'll cut it in half and then I'll put the one half over here and I just thinly slice it, pull it apart and I pan fry it and I pan fry out the bitter vegetable, the cruciferous vegetable and it, it makes a great noodle. noodle. You should do a keto skin regime. I will, I will. I'll do a keto skin regime, but it's really about like hydrating your water, yourself. It's about understanding that anything you put on your skin can be absorbed within 30 seconds. So people don't realize that when they're using toxic chemicals because they tout like the most, the best uh, products for your skin are going to be like, like under $15. What's the best way to start weight training? I have a gym membership only doing group classes. Get off the group, get off the yoga. It's fine. Spinning classes, nope, but never gone to weight rack. So, you guys, I say this all the time. I wish I had my exercise bands, but 
you know, for if you not like a woman who's never uh, really worked out before, you want to do a full body circuit to start as you're doing your keto adaptation before you start doing split routines. So um, you would do full body, like here's a bicep curl, right? Bicep curl, but you want to go slowly on the negatives, three second negatives. Really get that grinding reaction, right? The sliding filaments to grind, actin and actin, actin, actin and myosin. That's actin and myosin, and then you grind and create the blistering effect. But also, li uh, lifting helps strengthen your bone marrow, especially as a woman, draws oxygenated blood within the bloodstream to the bones, and um, also your muscles being activated helps stabilize your reproductive hormones. So I don't understand people who don't work out. Like, that's just like, it's not being human to not move your body. So resistance training is the best way. Start with lightweight, learn how to do time under tension, full body circuit, bam. And watch some videos on YouTube for basic exercises. You know, lateral raises, how to do proper lateral raise. Uh, learning about the different uh, parts of the muscle. So the three parts, you have like the, the, the deltoid, the, the uh, anterior deltoid, the medial deltoid, the anterior deltoid. What muscles are being used. Like if you guys have poor posture and you're trying to do abs, you can't build ab muscles. If, you're, if you're, your pelvis is tilted forward, your pelvis has to be tilted straight, so when you crunch, right, when you're crunching your abs, you can actually access more of the lower abdominal muscles. Because a lot of women and men actually have, don't, they don't have a plumb line that's a straight line from the head all the way down. So, and to keep this straight and to not have shoulders pronated, a lot of you guys, I promise you, right now, the people in the stream, your shoulders are over pronated. You need to straighten them up. Keep your head up like a ballerina. Okay, guys, we, we hit the one hour mark, so it's time for me to go. Um, but thank you for joining this chat and watching the unboxing of what? Put your box. So let's see how the see how the quality of the meats go. I will be cooking. I, last time I did a cooking segment live. I will be doing another cooking segment on one of these types of meats, probably the ribeye. Um, we're gonna skin fantastic keto rash. Um, so thank you, Deborah, for answering some of the questions I can't see. You guys, I'm never, um, story time. Uh, put in a number one if you want me to do a story. Put in a number one if you want me to do story time before I go. I can make it a short story. Put in a number one, because if there's not a lot of ones, I'm going to bounce. Okay, the ones are popping up. All right. Thank you guys. Um, one more, one more. So, uh, what type of story do you guys want me to to tell? Do you want me to do? Oh, there's a lot of ones. Thank you. Um, I can do a story on uh, my skateboard life, or racism in my skateboard life, being the only girl as a skater. How I got no, how like no, I already did keto. We done with keto. No. Um, <laughs> boys gym life um just what do you guys want me to talk about my stories um you know being 50 years of age and what it's like to live within a uh, millennial structure there is no me and you john i don't know you sorry africa okay should i talk about africa Oh, goodness. Sir Deluxe, thank you so much for contributing so much to the Super Chat. Oh, don't use your whole paycheck. I'm not Whole Foods, darn it. Uh, but thank you so much. Africa, boys, racism, and skateboarding. Gym life, boys. Maybe next time I've been waiting for Africa story. All right, Keisha, darn it. I'll tell an Africa story. And I better plug in my phone because the battery's dying. Okay. Phone's crooked. It's flopping on this. Hold okay. So when I went to Africa, I was living in Sweden, you guys. So a lot of you who don't know me, I used to live in Sweden. So of course I'm always like, hey Alice, I'm coming from the Scandinavia and you're a little Svensk. Yeah. But with that said, I used to live in Sweden. I ended up in Sweden because I was touring as a pro skateboarder, one of the first 
pro skateboarders of my era, but definitely the first African American pro skateboarder. And I had busted my knee there, so I had all these surgeries. Was that? No, that's pre surgery. Wait. No, that was pre surgery. Stupid me. Um, I had a friend. Um, he actually was a Yugoslavian living in Sweden, and he had gone to uh, Tanzania, as the Tanzanians call it, Tanzania, uh, to learn Swahili. So in East Africa, a lot of the countries speak Swahili. It's very simple, like Jambo is spelled J-A-M-B-O, Jambo. So learning the language is quite simple, and if you travel through East Africa, you can go to a lot of countries like Kenya and Tanzania and different places and be able to speak that language. So he went down there, and when he got down there, he was like, Steph, you, he wrote, this is pre-internet, guys, okay, that's how old I am. So he was like, Steph, you have to come to Tanzania, you're a black person, like, you, no boy stories, just skating, uh, you, I'm going that right now, I'm talking about an Africa story. And he was like, you have to come down here. You're the one person that I know who's living in Gothenburg, Jotobore, who's going to appreciate this experience going to Africa. Now, remember, this is pre-internet. So when I went down to Tanzania, or Tanzania, East Africa, below Kenya, I, um, I really, I think, I think I went to a library and found a book and literally flipped through it one day, but I didn't actually borrow the book. Again, no internet, guys. So this was in my 20s, so I go, so I'm like, all right, I book a ticket, and he goes, you don't have to worry about anything, I'm staying in a guest house, so you can stay with me in the guest house I'm staying. We're in a village called Sinza. This is outside of Dar es Salaam. Uh, it's getting late in Florida, bye. So. I'm like, okay, dirt, 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 okay, I'll go to Black Tanzania. <laughs> so I buy this ticket, and I don't have much money with me, but he's, don't worry, I got you stuff. So I get down there, and I'm staying with this white dude in a village, okay, and I remember taking a taxi, I arrived really late at night, pitch dark in Tenza, I mean in Dar es Salaam, I mean this is Africa, right, there's no street lights. And he's like, jump in a taxi, and I was in this taxi forever. You're learning Swahili now, right? That's so cool. So I jump in this taxi, and I'm just like, I feel like I'm on the moon, right? And I'm all trying to look out the window, but you can't see nothing because it's pitch black. It's the same experience when I went to Egypt. Like, you're going off in the tundra, there's, you can't see anything when it's, when it's night. So we get to this village, the guy drops me off, and he retrieves me, and we go in, and it's this... Very basic, it was a guest house, like a little hotel guest house, in a village deep into Africa. And um, the toilet worked, but sort of didn't work. There was no running water. And um, anyway, so I'm staying there. I think I slept on the floor. If I can remember, you made a little bed on the floor. And the next day in the morning, I wake up and there it's like dirt roads. Like I went to South Africa twice and to Egypt. Okay, Tanzania in a village is Africa, Africa. Okay, this isn't like, like, South Africa is like, it's Africa, but like, I was in Africa, Africa, okay? We're talking like, the women had their children strapped to them, wrapped. Ah, oh, Gary, nice to see you, Gary. As you can see, I'm fine. As you can see, I just can't live stream every day, but thank you, Gary, for the 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 year? The 20 year. Thank you so much for contributing to the chat. So, um, I, the way, next day, right, let me see, he writes, Hey, Stephanie, great broadcast tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. So, you guys, like, in the early 90s, like, little half tops were so popular where you had your belly showing. And I think I had a pair of jeans on with a t-shirt and my belly was showing the next day. And they were like, oh, oh. I was like, uh-oh. I went and I found a big t-shirt and covered my body. Because <laughs> you are not supposed to show your belly, right? Like here I'm showing my, t I'm really showing my belly. You cannot show no belly, okay, in a village. That's a big no-no. If I don't want to stand out, then no. And um, I had my hair braided all the way to the ends 
here I've got like bang pieces out so people like my texture of hair is not as curly as the Tanzanian women but braids were very popular at that time so and they're also mixed a lot with uh, with uh, with uh, you know people who come from Saudi Arabia and a lot of um, uh, Arab, Arab countries so you do get some some Tanzanians with straighter hair and some with lighter skin so they don't understand an American you know who's mixed with stuff they don't understand that so they only stand it's like when I went to South Africa they have like colored people that's a whole nother I think I should talk about uh, South Africa because that was also another really great interesting situation because they've got Indian you've got British Dutch African different types of Africans and then you've got coloreds yep you got colors and they just put you in that box oh you are a colored person they didn't see me as African they put me as, as colored but that's another story about South Africa which is very very interesting and then you're not allowed for many years through apartheid you were never allowed to mix so colored people stay with colored and colored and colored and then they created their own sub ethnicity right so that's very interesting but um, what about the, the guys can I have my belly out no so I'm in Africa, Africa, and I don't really know this guy very well that I'm staying with. And the next day, not the next day, but the, the second day I was there, we went into Dar es Salaam. We went to a street market. And if you ever watch these videos of Africa, Africa, they have these markets all over the place. And I'm walking around, and I have my body totally covered, so I'm good. Like, they don't, oh, okay, cool. They, um, they don't know what I am, so they just leave me alone. But him? white dude and I was like peace out like I went walking around by myself so I'm walking around it's been like an hour and a half he runs up to me and he's like freaking out panicking oh they just robbed me they just robbed me I had a little briefcase they took it they stole it and they had a knife at my throat blah 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 and I was like dude why are you walking around with money bruh like, my brain literally was like, you've been here a few months. You should know better to not carry a brief briefcase and have your money on you like that. Like, I'm smart enough to not to not do that, fool. Like, what are you? Duh. <laughs> they, like, robbed him. And it's just like, I think what he did was he pulled out money to give to someone because there's people with leprosy there. You see the weirdest stuff in Africa, Africa. Like, there was this dude dragging his body across the ground on dirt ground with a stump like a tree thing and like you know no wheelchair no no crutches so it's just dragging and like you're giving money to the poorest of the poor and if you pull out what I learned before I went to Africa is that you don't give anybody money okay no no matter how bad you feel for them you give them a bracelet you give them a ring you give them your watch but you do not give them money no you say like you bond with somebody here this is for you can we get this off my finger this is for you because we bonded. So, long story short, <clears throat> I found out that he was having sex with young girls because there's there's prostitution there, and um, <laughs> and I just was like, I start seeing him. Um, yeah, I've been on keto for over ten years, so I started just seeing him do stuff that I was just. I'm like, I'm not about this. So we got into a big fight. I was like, you're disgusting. This is, you're an embarrassment to yourself. Like, what are you doing? These girls are like 15. And, um, you know, the uh, HIV population is very high at that time there. It was like uh, the 38% or 40% of the population. So, you know, it's pretty gnarly. So, um, He's like, get out of the guest house, you know, you're done. And I was like, oops, I don't have a lot of money. <laughs> and he kicked me out because we got into a conversation about him sleeping with these young girls. So I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money on me. So... I moved to another guest house and some of the locals there uh, and most people did not speak English 
but there was one person in particular who was like, I can take you into Dada Salaam, which is like 40 minutes away from Sinza. And we took these like little, they're like the tuk-tuk things, like you, you in the back of a truck, you like in a little, you know, minivan. And it's like you pay a quarter. And he took me there uh, to town to the, um, to the American embassy. And there, I, yeah, right? Right, Tracy? There I was able to make a phone call to a friend who then wired me, I think it was like 600 bucks or something like that. So I had to return two days later, get the money. And then they were like, you need to go and see the rest of this beautiful country. You need to go to, um, to uh, uh, um, Zanzibar. Zanzibar is an island right off the coast of Dar es Salaam, which is the capital city in Tanzania. And what you guys don't understand is that a lot of people fly into Kenya to then go to northern Tanzania to go to the Serengeti and see the lions and the elephants and the giraffe and all this type of stuff. The wild game out there, those big, big animals, the big five, right? Lions, uh, lions, um, uh, uh, hippos, uh, rhinoceros, these are the big ones. The, right, Zanzibar. So, uh, yes, Zanzibar is amazing. So, I have pictures. Hold on, guys. Let me show you. I've got pictures from this trip because you guys know I used to work as a photographer. So, here are some of my, here's some of my photography, right? So, I can pull up some of the pictures from that trip. Okay, so I ended up going to Zanzibar. That's another story. And I also went, went up to Arusha and met with the uh, Maasai. So, you know, ketogenic people. Hello. Yes, the Maasai. Let's see here. Let me pull up some other pics. pics. Um, so here's like, I was obsessed with trees. Typical African tree, right? Sorry for the reflection. I got a lot of pictures, you guys. I used to spend hours in the dark room, right? This is Italy. Let me see if I can find these kids that I photographed in Africa. They were the only kids. So here's my trip to Egypt. kids where are the kids hold on guys just give me two more seconds I want to show you these kids that I photographed in um, in Zanzibar but because this is an impromptu This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, there was a Colosseum in there. Let's see here. Oh, here they are, you guys. So when I got to Zanzibar, these were the only children that let me photograph them. The rest of them thought that, like, you were stealing their soul. So you can see that picture, you guys. So... As you guys can see, I was heavily into photography for a long, long time. So I took pictures of these kids and I was in the back of a truck in Zanzibar and I was touring the island and they were the only kids that ran the back of the truck and they were doing all this stuff and I was like, this is film, okay? This is not digital. And I was clicking, 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 pulling the film out, reloading and clicking, 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 clicking back in the day. So I go to Zanzibar. And when I go to Zanzibar, so I think on the boat ride over to Zanzibar, I met the, this white couple. And they were like, they told me, um, so have they been calling you Mazungo? And I was like, no, what's that? They're like, it means white person. And I was like, why would they call me a white person? They're like, 
because you're not African and they consider any and you're an American and they considered everybody who's not African a Mazungo and you're a Mazungo and I was like I'm staying in a village you know what they call me Dada okay they call me mama they call me Dada they either call me mother or they call me sister but no one has ever called me Mazungo ever so I got really pissed at this couple I was like you want to manifest that on me you want that to happen but they're like well you haven't been here long enough it's going to happen we have a friend who came down with us and she was black and they called her Mazungo and I was like they're never gonna call me Mazungo never and they never did not in two months of me living there so I go to Zanzibar I was like I don't even want when I got there there were these tourists. It was the first time I was around tourists. The whole time I was in the Sinza village, I was like only around Africans. I was not around a single tourist. So by the time I got on this boat and we went over to Dada Sal no, to Zanzibar, it was the first time I was around tourists. It was embarrassing. They spoke to these people like they were garbage, yelling at them, telling them, come over here, grab my bags, blah, blah, blah. It was embarrassing. But there I also went to, um, some slave holding centers what you guys don't know is that the slave trade was also very big on east africa by the arabs a lot of you guys don't know that some of the arab nations um had a lot of slave trading in zanzibar so they took me to this room that was like literally four feet high and they would stick 100 people in this tiny room and they would have they would shat on themselves pee on themselves and it'd be cramped up you could not stand up and they'd have to live in this place for one month before sh being shipped off to Arab nations so that was very interesting to go and see the slave trade in East Africa plus all of the beautiful island everything comes over there like a lot of different countries would plant a lot of spices and things there so things to cure malaria like certain berries for lipstick or makeup you know all everything yeah I know it's a very very interesting experience so from there I stayed there, I think, like oh, 10 days or a week. I don't remember. So, so it was like I was in my 20s. So I go back. Now, these people I befriended on my own because now I'm by myself. These people that I befri befriended in Sinza, the village I was originally staying in, were like, we'll come get you on this day. We'll retrieve you. But the boat was four hours late, so they came and left. So you guys listen to this story because I was like, I arrived. I was like, I'm so late. I hope they're here. They weren't there, and like Sinza is like almost like 45 minutes outside of um, of, uh, of of Dar es Salaam, and there wasn't any taxis running at that time, and I started to panic. I got off that boat panicking. Everybody's going to their hotels, and and I was panicking. The whole boat was filled with tourists, right? Mostly white tourists. So. Uh, this guy near a fruit stand when I got off I was I was like this I was like oh mommy mama he was like he started trying to speak to me in Swahili and I was like what and he was like he goes you don't speak Swahili sister he called me sister and I said no he said where are you going and I said to Sinza he goes oh it's too late and I was like oh. and he said um how are you going to get there? And I said, well, the little back of the bus minivan thing. He's like, no, 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 you'll get either raped or you'll get uh, robbed. I was like, he said, if they hear one word of English come out of your mouth, you're going to be in trouble. And thank you, Kishel. I was like, crap. He goes, he goes, he's sitting there like, you know, this poor girl, right? He was like, Wait, he says, wait, because he had a fruit stand and he was selling fruit to tourists coming off the boat from uh, Zanzibar. She goes, you wait here. So I'm standing there like, what am I going to do? This is pre-internet, guys. There's no Uber. So he comes back with another guy. So the guy's like, this, he goes, this guy's going to watch my fruit stand and I'm going to take you to Sinza. It's not safe for you, he said. I said, are you sure? He goes, yes, I'm sure. It's not safe for you. He goes, it's not safe for you, sister. I must take you there. So we get into this like little minivan thing and then another one and then another one. We got, we got to one, you know, crossing place on our way to Sinza. Really, really dangerous. He said, keep your mouth shut. Very nice person. Yeah. He goes, keep your mouth shut. I said, mm-hmm. 
He goes, I do all the talking. And so we got to the one dangerous little city on the way, going, not city, a uh, town, village, village, sorry, on the way. And so he, we had to find the guest house I was staying in. And it was a 20 minute walk around this, we're in Africa, there's no street lights, honey. And he's asking, and I'm like, the little guest house, I was saying it with not an African, so he's like, I can't find this. We finally found the pla find the place, and he refused for me to pay for each little ride. And these people make a dollar a day, okay? I did not stutter. I said a dollar a day, okay? So he spent his entire day's earning on taking me to this place. And I remember that thing, don't pull out your money. So you guys know I wear big watches, and I took off my watch. I gave it to him. I said, thank you. I gave him my watch, took it off, gave it to him, and I said, um, uh, I gave him my, my uh, address to send letters, and he cried. He cried and was like, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I tried to give him the money just for the, for the, the transportation. He refused to take it. Took the watch, took my address, and left. And I was like back safe again, really, really late at night. Uh, well, Gary, when I was younger, I was more stupid. <laughs> okay. I didn't know it was that dangerous, you know. Can easily to be raped and all the high percentages of HIV. I mean, somebody could have just pulled me to the back alley and I would have been in trouble. So, uh, um... I'm going to give you more of these stories from this trip because I also um, did not take my malaria medication because I was dumb and got malaria when I was there. That's another story about me getting malaria in Africa. So there you go. There is a part of the story. The story's not over. There's a lot of stories on that one story. That one trip, I was there for almost two months by myself. Okay, I ended up going to a safari, and I'll tell you guys that on another stream about my experience going to Arusha, which is up in near Kenya, and you hire a driver, you hire a cook, and you stay out in the Serengeti, okay? It was one of the most amazing experiences that I ever went through in my life, and where I'll tell you other stories where elephants, because elephants can charge the Range Rovers, and you can die, and I was, I've got pictures you know, from this trip, it was crazy. The guy, that's another story, guys. Like, I saw him when I got back. We didn't even see each other, and we never spoke again. I'd see him in Sweden, out, and we never said a word to each other. It was just noted. I'd be, I was like, you know, I was like that to him, like, I see you, I'm not afraid, I'm not gonna look down, you fool. But, yeah, that was, a, you know, we were in our 20s. That fool's old now. Karma got back to him a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I have so many stories about racism. When, when I meet black people, like, I've never had anyone be racist towards me. It's like, it's never happened. Talk about denial being more than just a river in Egypt, which I have crossed. We went to Egypt, which I have stories about Egypt as well. I think I told you a story about the woman, the woman's mother dying when I was in Cairo. Anyway, that's another story. Steph's got stories from my traveling back in the day, pre-internet. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening to the stream. 78 people stayed to hear my crazy stories. It's so funny because as soon as I go into stories, like 40 people just jump off. And they just really want me to do work, right? Answer keto questions. I swear. Sometimes I don't understand people. It's nice to show another side of who I am because people look at me and think that I don't have any problems. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, thank you. So maybe perhaps the re my mom was very strong growing up, uh, when I was growing up, and I naively got into skateboarding and became a pro skateboarder and started traveling the world and living abroad. Like, I didn't know any better. I was just, duh. And because of that, I was very shy when I was younger, painfully shy. Thank you, Tanya. 
you still want to go to Africa. Africa is like, yo, I've been to South Africa twice. I've been to Egypt and I've been to the real Africa, Africa, which is Tanzania. And that was for two months. Um, and I've been to a lot of countries all around the world, you guys. As you know, I'm a super traveler. And uh, do a kid's story. Okay, I'll do a kid's story next time. Yo, I got some kid's stories. Next time I can talk about the first fist fight that I got in when I was like six. And my brother was like, hit him! Hit him! My brother is so bad. He was like, hit him! I'll tell you that story later where I got in a fist fight, my first fist fight, and I like, you know, <laughs> what do you think about food in Sweden? I mean, your tror at mot in Sverige are helt okej. Det beror på vad du äter. That's what I think about it. Thank you for story. If may say something, I'm from Eastern Europe, and so co uh, co -worker, co worker who came from Southern states would tell me things like maybe you're allergic to Americans, and uh, allergic to other Americans. Sometimes, you guys, when I I was gone, I lived in Europe from 19 to 34, 34, 35. I was there for almost 16 years, and when I came back, I had an accent. People are like, what country are you from? I was like, I'm from the States. You're talking about food? I'm from, I'm like, so yes, yeah, so I got a lot of stories. There's race. I have a lot of racist stories, so I have a racist story. I think I told you last time, you guys, I have a racist story where I got into an altercation with the Ku Klux Klan skinheads when I was 21. Pink. Go check out my other live streams. I pull out the videos and the film. We did. We, we made a movie about it, and I showed you guys uh, that stuff then. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining the chat. I'll tell you that for my six-year-old first fist fight. You know, my brother, he, my brother was so tough on me, no one scared me. My mom was tough, and my brother was tough. So what am I going to be afraid of? You know, I, I was afraid of them. And I'm not kidding. Like, I am not kidding. Like, I am not kidding. Like, and my brother used to beat me up. No, 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 you, you don't know. You don't know. More Africa stories. I don't sound like I'm from California. Sometimes I do. When I'm talking to these people and they're like, no, seriously. And I'll, I'll, I'll be like, oh, oh, no, get it out. Get it out of my mouth. Get it out. I did not just go, oh, so seriously. Nah. Like, there's that California draw. So when you talk, you talk a little bit like this. Yeah, it's so fabulous. No. If you catch me doing that, no. No. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, for people who are on the course page, like Kishel and Deborah and a few others, thank you so much for also joining the live stream here on YouTube. These are real super supporters. Alan, so, okay, yo ska säger mer svenska historia en annan live stream. So I'll tell more Swedish stories. So Sweden was also another interesting experience. It's where I busted my knee and I had all my surgeries in Sweden. Thank you so much, is it Sugar Bear 911. Thank you so much for joining, I mean, to contribute to the super chat. Thank you, because I'm not even talking about keto, I'm just doing story time. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Wouldn't mess with it. Couldn't listen to your stories all day. Ah, oh, thank you, Malda. Uh, go, Shiba. Go, Shiba. Mm -mm -mm. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Boop. So yes, I've got stories because my life is unconventional as a black girl went to an all-white school which is like why I talk like this and had a child when I went over to like my mother my mama's from the south but I was born here in LA and then when I ended up in Sweden that was very very interesting I have a lot of stories about skin color there and see I did it skin color uh, I have stories there about skin color and um, their perception of people of uh, what is it Afrocentricity yes. I have very interesting stories there. They'd be like, I love your skin. I wish I had my skin like yours. I wish I love your body. I love your lips. I love your hair. And I never heard that in California growing up. 
ever. That was weird to live in Sweden. All right, guys, good night. No, you shouldn't be running, not right now. Not while trying to adapt. But Jay, I'm out. So peace, peace, peace. I've got stories about going to London, right? And Manchester. All right, guys, thank you. Have a fabulous night. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Don't ever grow up, because I never will. Peace out, guys. Bye, bye-bye. But if you don't see me streaming, I'm still good. Good night, Gian.